Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain how to remove the uh, shocks and springs in a 2007 Honda Fit. I think this pretty much uh, is going to be applicable to the entire first generation, possibly into the second generation as well. Uh, fairly easy to do. Basically, uh, there's two bolts holding in these shocks. There's one at the bottom, and then uh, there's a nut at the top, and you remove the shock. If you remove the sh both shocks at the same time, then it's extremely easy to uh, pull out the springs. So if you do have to remove the springs, I would suggest just disconnecting uh, both of the bottom bolts for the shocks and then reinstalling them. Uh, I think you'll find it to be much easier. I was doing this as part of a, another project um, to remove the rear axle. So there may, you may see some other stuff disconnected that you normally would not disconnect, but this is pretty much the first step in that process. So there's not going to be much else um, to get disconnected. Uh, it should only take uh, maybe you know, an hour or so to replace uh, both shocks, possibly a little less, uh, just depending on how organized you are and quick and all that stuff. And uh, as long as you don't have any problems getting the bolts out. If you do have problems getting the bolts out and they're rusted in, uh, you can just uh, cut them off with a cutoff wheel. Um, and then you can just add a nut, you know, find a bolt of the appropriate size and slip it through and, and probably just use a nut on the, um, the far side. Uh, to tighten it back down. Uh, let's get started. Okay, removing the shocks is pretty easy. So first step, you know, get the car up, but there's a 14 millimeter bolt right here. Uh, you'll remove that. And then if you're lucky, it'll come out fairly easily. But what you may end up having to do is jack this up just a touch in order to uh, take tension off because the, the shock is going to push down on the bolt slightly and it, it creates a little bit of tension on it. So what we'll do first is we're going to remove this bolt or loosen as much as possible and then I may have to jack it up just a little bit underneath here, lift it up and then uh, that might be enough to be able to pull that bolt out. Now you can see I have the jack up here underneath that seems to allow it to loosen up just a bit more and then what you may end up having to do is from the other side which is over here you can see it is push through the bolt through on this side too using like a center punch. I was able to use a pry bar just get in and actually just pry it out a little bit and then now it pulled right out. So now it's going to be loose on this side. Uh, you use a pry bar to pop, pop this out. I'm just going to lower the shock down a bit. Boom, it's already partially out right now. Let's see if I can do this one handed without too much camera shake. There you go. Boom. It's out. Now you just got to take it off the top. Okay, the next step is to go into the trunk uh, behind the seats. The struts, uh, the shocks are covered underneath these. You just pop this thing off. You can actually use a screwdriver. Um, sometimes by hand you can just grab it. Uh, let's see. Just depending on how much. Boom. That exposes the top of the, the shock there. Might be hard to tell, but there's an Allen head socket on the top, and then there's a bolt. So it's a five millimeter Allen and a 14 millimeter nut. So it's really nice having a ratcheting wrench. And then the Allen is just to kind of hold it from spinning. So you just stick that in. You don't have to use anything fancy. And then you're just gonna take off the uh, the nut, and then you should be able to take the uh, shock right out. All right. So now that that's off. Ratcheting wrenches help a lot. Uh, you know, this comes off. So basically, the tool sits like that. And the shock already fell out. <laughs> um, this tool will work, but it's it, just barely. It's better to get a socket. So the, sh <laughs> the shock already fell out. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, <clears throat> the reverse is, uh, the install is, is opposite of the removal. So you'd put the shock through here first, you'd put this rubber gasket, rubber thing on, on, and then you'd put this uh, a metal washer, and then this rubber piece has kind of like a flat piece that goes down, and a dome piece that's on the top. And then, uh, and then you're able to manually collapse the shock up to be able to get the bottom bolt in. And that's pretty much it. But I'm going to remove the springs now, and you're welcome to watch that. Okay, once you remove both shocks, the axle is actually going to be able to hang down low enough where the springs will literally just come right out. 
that's it. You're gonna get this, this rubber piece at the bottom and replace it, rubber piece at the top, and you'll be able to slip the new uh, uh, springs back in. You get this thing up just a little bit and get a, um, the jack underneath it. You can jack it back up and that'll allow you to seat the new uh, springs. And then you get one shock in there and that'll help hold the axle up um, so that you can, uh, when you get the other one in, then you can release the jack and then you can tighten everything back up. So, so the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the springs in before I have the shock. So this should be fairly easy. One thing to note is the bottom of the springs, there's a flat here uh, that will correspond on this. There's a flat on the back side here so you know which side uh, the spring you know, sits. And it's a lot easier to get these things in when there's no shocks in there at all because you can, you can push it down. Well, even once you have one shock in there, you got a lot less flexibility. As you can see, the springs are in there. Literally, you just push this down a little bit. You can see the spring is coming off the top perch right there. Super easy to get in without any shock. Tighten the top of the shock. You just put this, install it. So what you have, you have two rubber bushings. Um, one you put on the shock first, and then you push the shock up into here. Then you take the second one, put it on top, and there's a metal plate that should be left over from the previous shocks. Then you put the nut on. You're gonna have to hold it in place with a Torx. Uh, well, this is Torx for Gabriel. And then, uh, this is why I like ratcheting wrenches. You use a ratcheting wrench to tighten it down. Pretty simple. You start that on the top, and then you hit the bottom. Okay, to get the shock in the bottom, you, know, you can raise it up, you compress the spring a little bit. I had problems getting it pushed down this way, so what I did is I brought the shock down kind of in front, and then hammered it tapped it in back into this way until the holes lined up were very close. Uh, then you just uh, install the little bolt. Um, you could use a screwdriver to help line up the holes a little bit as necessary with the shock and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay so I installed the shock down here. At the bottom there's a bolt. I did have this one was screwed up on me so there's a there's a nut that's attached on this side. Uh, if for whatever reason that fails, you break the bolt or whatever, you can cut this thing off on the side with a cutoff wheel. It's not a big deal. And then you can just get a through bolt and a nut and just tighten it up that way. That'll work. Um, if the threads are just screwed up, you can get a tap. It's a uh, 10 millimeter, 10 by 1.25 millimeter um, thread for the bolt. So if the bolt's okay but the nut is bad, and you can run this tap through and, and, and chase it. That's what I ended up doing on mine. Um, or, like I said, you can just buy a nut and then just uh, tighten it that way. Uh, you know, it's nice to get one with a, a flange head like this, or if you can get, you know, some washers or whatever, that's good. You know, locking one is, works as well. Um, but if you do have to cut this off, you know, really what you do is just cut the nut off on the back, on this side. And you can do it on, you know, for either side of the car. But luckily it's a, it's pretty accessible with a cutoff wheel. You will have to get an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel to go in and just cut it and grind it. Um, and then you can replace it with just a nut. And then, of course, you're using, you know, you're holding a wrench on this side to hold this nut. Um, and that is an acceptable repair for the shocks. If you have to replace the bolt, you know, it's kind of the same thing. You just take the bolt in or figure out what length it is that you need, you know, and, you know, you can get an M if the nut is good, but the bolt's bad. Uh, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a 10 millimeter, 1.25. I'm not exactly sure the length, and you'll have to figure that out. All right, so uh, for redoing the shocks, that's pretty easy. Again, it's just a bolt down here, undoing the top, and then it's the reverse. Uh, you do have to jack this up a little bit in order to get because the shock is only going to drop so far in order for you to, to, to line up the holes and uh, then you tighten it up. Thank you. I hope you liked the video. If, uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any constructive criticism or any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Uh, please feel free to check out some of my other videos. Um, if you have any interest in photography or anything like that, I do have videos about that. Uh, and uh, then please subscribe. I would appreciate it. And if uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you.